Inside this box supposedly is an X79 Intel motherboard. I don't know if it works or not, so I have a CPU and some RAM back there to see if it actually posts. So I recently picked up this Intel DX79SR motherboard and uh, it was going for pretty cheap. Uh, I contacted the seller to see um, if there's any actual physical damage to stuff like the CPU socket and they said it looked fine. So I don't really see what the other problem is. Um, they told me that the BIOS button, because it has onboard uh, power and reset, they said that it was broken off or something like that. I'm not exactly sure if it was because it wasn't fine in the picture. But let's crack this open and see what we have. Alrighty, so the board looks like it's in good condition. It's a little bit dusty, but I don't see any physical damage anywhere. So uh, let's go over it real quick. So it supports quad channel memory. Uh, it has eight DIMM slots. It supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, and it does support registered. So I do have a Xeon processor. So if I want to put that in, then I can get cheaper RAM. Other than that, it's got many more uh, PCIe slots than my uh, ASUS board has, uh, more uh, fan headers. It's got pretty generous I.O. Four USB 3.0, uh, six USB 2.0, uh, dual gigabit uh, Ethernet, uh, Firewire, and some audio ports. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think that might be what the broken button was. But uh, yeah. So to test this board, uh, I picked up a three dollar CPU. Uh, this is this isn't worth looking up the specs for. It's an E52603, which is a quad core uh, based on the Sandy Bridge architecture, and it has a whopping 1.8 gigahertz base and uh, no Intel Turbo Boost, meaning it's basically stuck at that very slow clock speed. But for what I'm going to be doing, just testing, uh, you know, it's not a really big investment. And I have two two gigabyte sticks of DDR3. Um, this is just regular memory. A friend just gave it to me. I don't actually know if these work, so yeah, who knows, but you know, they probably work. But yeah, this will just put these in uh, the two dim slots here, see if it posts. And this is where things start to get a little bit sketchy because I ordered a uh, fan adapter, CPU fan adapter for um, AMD to LG2011, but that hasn't come in yet, so my plan is I can power on the system for maybe like a minute or so to get into the BIOS, see if everything's working properly. Which, yeah, I know it kind of sounds crazy, but this is a pretty low TDP chip in the first place. So, I mean, if it gets damaged, too bad, just to test the motherboard. So, yeah, I don't have any mounting hardware for my Freezer Extreme Revision 2, so just going to put this CPU in the socket along with the two memory slots. And I also have my GTX 780 Ti that I'll be placing in the uh, PCIe slot. And uh, I'll hook it up to my power supply, and we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and uh, install the motherboard, CPU, and RAM into my current system. I'm going to have to take everything out because I don't have a spare power supply. So let's just go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so the motherboard is now installed. Uh, actually kind of jumped to life for a second whenever I flipped the power supply switch, but uh, let's see if anything happens. This is really sketchy with no CPU cooler, but let's try and power it on. Hmm. Okay, so I was really wanting to speed through this, but I'm pretty sure that a standoff was misplaced, so I went back and did it right. After I did that, the board went through the different postcodes, ensuring everything works. It got stuck at the second to last code, which is 01, and doing a quick search, that is INT19. 
I didn't know what that meant, but I had to assume that the BIOS was a culprit, considering I tried all the DIMM slots and I knew the correct slots to use. So I had to figure out some means of getting a new BIOS flashed. Luckily, Intel has various different options. I went with the recovery option, which required me to remove the BIOS config jumper and plug in a flash drive with the BIOS file at its root. To my surprise, using the latest BIOS file available, the diagnostic LED started freaking out and the installation menu popped up. I saw that the original BIOS hadn't been updated, judging by the fact that it was from 2013 and the newest available was 2014. By then, I flipped my case over and laid my cooler on the IHS just so I didn't risk interrupting the installation process. Once it finished, I powered off the system, removed my flash drive, reinserted the BIOS config jumper, and there you have it. An in theory, fully functional X79 motherboard that's 50 bucks, not from China, and can actually overclock. It even tried to set up Windows when it booted from my SSD. Anyways, all that's left to do is throw in some memory, upgrade the CPU, overclock the crud out of it, and that's a full system. While the single thread of performance is lacking in comparison to my 2200G, 6 core i7s and Xeons are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to multi core performance. Though I will be limited on this specific board, along with many more hiccups, which I'll come back to in another video. But with some patience and a bit of effort, this platform will do what my 2200G system lacked. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you did enjoy the video, hit that like button. While you're there, consider subscribing to the channel and enable notifications for more quality tech videos. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.